Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your compassion. Thank you for your purpose. We're asking, Lord, that today, this session, you open your heart, open the scriptures to everyone in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, your word will do good in every life. Transform every life. Make everyone triumphant in the Lord in Jesus' name. Fulfill your word and your promise in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said another. Triumphant, amen. Victorious, amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Again, we're coming to Daniel. And we're coming to Daniel chapter 4. I'm looking at Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. I want you to look at that last part of the sentence. He is able, able to do all things positive, negative. Able to do all things prophetic, practical. Able to do all things in that generation and in this generation. Able to do all things according to his will, according to his mind, according to his purpose, according to his prediction, his promise and prophecy. This morning, this session in Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at the message, Able, Able, God is Able. Every time, everywhere, for everyone, according to his plan, according to his purpose, Able, Able, God is Able. I'm sure you understand and you know where we're coming from? Chapter 1 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 2 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 3 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. As we look at Nebuchadnezzar at the end of chapter 3, it said, I praise the God of heaven because the people that trust in him, who because of that, are trustworthy and be the people that have faith in him or because of that are faithful and the people that lean on him and the people that depend on him therefore they are dependable he has protected them he has preserved them they went through the fire but the fire was not able to touch them or to do anything negative in their lives that same Nebuchadnezzar, religious, that same Nebuchadnezzar, that at the moment his testimony appeared convincing. It appeared this must be a converted man. But you know, conversion goes beyond the watch of the mouth. Conversion goes beyond the testimony temporal, temporary of a moment. Conversion will take place in the heart. It will make a change. It will make a transformation. It's more than joining a church. It's more than changing outward expression. It's more than wearing a garment. It's more than a temporary confession about the Lord God Almighty. Conversion is a transformation of the heart, a change of life, a change of disposition, a change in every area and the heart now 
being humble before the Lord will not go into pride anymore. But Nebuchadnezzar shows us the average religious man. Shows us the average churchgoer and shows us the average member of any denomination, even though they confess, even though they read the Bible, even though they even see miracles happening in other lives, it takes internalizing the word internalizing the promise internalizing the power of a creator god in their lives and making a definite change that's why as we come to chapter 4 of daniel god had to do something that humiliated the man turned the man from being a man to what he really is to a beast and when reality came to him and he saw the power of God that turned everything around he now had a real transformation a real conversion and a real confession that now said God the God of heaven the most high God that that God is able and he now gives a testimony not what he saw in daniel a testimony not what he saw on shadrach meshach and abednego a testimony of what had happened unto him in daniel chapter 4 reading from verse 1 daniel chapter 4 verse 1 it says nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people nations and languages that dwell on in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you look at verse 2 in verse 2 i thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high god has wrought toward me in verse 3 he says how great I signs and how mighty I his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Verse 34. In verse 34, it says, and at the end of the days, the days of discipline for Nebuchadnezzar, the day of heaven having impact and real irresistible pressure on the man on earth it said and all the at the end of the days i nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and mine understanding returned unto me he had lost his understanding he had lost his mind he had lost what made him a man but now he said at the end of the time of the discipline my understanding returned unto me and i blessed the most high and i praised and honored him that liveth forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation verse 35 it says and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing all the inhabitants of the earth when they make themselves opposed to the almighty now this does not talk about daniel daniel a beloved man before the almighty god this does not talk about shadrach meshach and abednego shadrach Abesh, Ab uh, and abednego and um, all those three people it, it, they were so important in sight of the lord the lord god of heaven sent christ unto them and he's not talking of people like peter like john like james it's not talking about people like paul all because God appointed him to be an apostle that will carry his message to the rest of the world but the ordinary people 
and the normal people and the monarchs and the kings and, and the people on earth all these inhabitants of the earth that regard God as nothing. God also regards them as nothing. All the inhabitants of the earth that make God of nothing. God also makes them of nothing. And Nebuchadnezzar himself, an emperor. Nebuchadnezzar himself, a king. All over the powers, all over the universe at that time. Those who regard me, those who honor me, I will regard and honor. And those who despise me and make little of me, I make little or nothing of them. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, None can stay a hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Verse 36, in verse 36, at the same time, my reason, my reasoning, my faculties returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my lords sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me now he concludes in verse 37 it says in verse 37 now I Nebuchadnezzar for real. I, Nebuchadnezzar, with conviction. I, Nebuchadnezzar, with a change of life, a transformation of heart. I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol, exalt and honor the king, capital king, the king of heaven, who has authority over all the kings and the lords and the emperors on earth and all whose words are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride at that time and at this time those that walk in pride like Pharaoh like Nebuchadnezzar like Herod and those that walk in pride among all men in every generation those that walk in pride he is able to abase that's why we're looking at this chapter now able able the god who is able we divide the passage to three parts number one is talking about the testimony of a proud king after humiliation when he said who is that god and he carried on in a proud disposition the god of heaven showed him who is in charge who brought judah to babylon who defeated jehoiakim who brought Nebuchadnezzar to the point where he was that he ruled in the generation of men. Now, Nebuchadnezzar realized and he gave testimony, the testimony of a proud king after humiliation. Number two, the tree with a peculiar kind of hardness. The tree, and actually, He's talking of Nebuchadnezzar as the tree. Remember what Jesus said? If they have done this to a green tree, referring to himself, man is like a tree planted by God, grows around with all the circumstances around him, and eventually the tree might be cut down. And so man is shown 
represented symbolized by a tree in the dream that god gave nebuchadnezzar, gave nebuchadnezzar the tree with a peculiar kind of hardness the kind of hardness nebuchadnezzar had was peculiar and he also had a peculiar treatment because of his peculiar hardness number three now is the triumph of the powerful king of heaven the triumph god will triumph in every case in your case in my case in your family in the church among the jews on israel nebuchadnezzar may think i got them I captured them. I put them in captivity. But the king of heaven has the final say. And even if Kadnesah will confess that the king of heaven has the final say. And in Nebuchadnezzar may brag, may boast. And in Nebuchadnezzar, any man, any woman, anyone hearing me now, anyone here or there, anywhere may brag and boast and may say, I am this, I am that, I will do this, I will do that. My friend, my neighbor, God, the King of heaven, has the final say, the triumph of the powerful King of heaven. Let's look at number one here. Number one here, we're looking at the testimony of a proud king after his humiliation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all the people, all nations, and all languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you we divide this section to three parts number one number one the supernatural signs and wonders of god on high number two the, spectac the spectacular signs and works of the god of heaven and then number three the steadfast saints and words of God for all humans, for everyone. Look at number one there. Number one is the supernatural signs and wonders of God on high. The God on high. The God who is able and the God who does signs and wonders every time everywhere daniel chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 again it says and nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people all nations and all languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you we're looking at uh, verse 2 now in verse 2 it says i thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high god has Wrought toward me. He was going to give testimony as to what God has done. And he says what God did and what God is doing and what God will yet do. They are nothing short of signs and wonders. Look at that same Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I'm looking at verse 22. In Daniel chapter 6, looking at verse 22, it says God has said his angel and he has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before the before him innocency was found in me and also before the old king have i done no hurt. look at verse 23 in verse 23 it says in this verse then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take daniel up out of the den so daniel was taken up out of the den and 
no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God, signs and wonders. Into the lion's den, a night in the lion's den, and coming out unhurt, and coming out the way he went in with faith at the faithful, he came out with the freshness of energy and confidence, faithfulness unto the Lord, signs and wonders. Whether it's in chapter 2, or in chapter 3, or chapter 4, or chapter 6, signs and wonders done by the Lord. Until today, Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, it tells us how shall we escape if we neglect to a uh, so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him look at verse 4 there in verse 4 god also bearing them witness with signs and wonders god Bearing them, them who Enoch, Noah, bearing them witness, them who Abraham, them who Joseph, bearing them witness, them who, them, the children of Israel, the more they persecuted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Them who at the wench to the river, the Red Sea, nothing, what had never happened, the power of God parted the Red Sea and they went over, bearing them witness, them who, the children of Israel, by the rock, at the waters gushed out of the rock, them who, the children of Israel, by river Jordan, that at the feet of the priest, head on Jordan, Jordan divided them who Joshua, as he told the sun, sun stand there, and the moon stand there, and the sun so still, and will not move, and will not, the rotation of the earth around the sun will not take place for almost a day. Them who, them, the children of Israel, as now Caleb came to boast and the brag, and he one day got sent an angel and destroyed the army of 185,000 militant soldiers. God is still walking signs and wonders. And when Christ came, walking on the water, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, and casting those evil spirits out, and even raising the dead, Lazarus, that had died, and for four days, now God, Christ raised him up, God bearing them witness. Both were signs and wonders, and diverse miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will that God is still alive today he'll bear your witness with signs with wonders with power with miracle with manifestation you never saw in your life in Jesus name amen, amen. He bears us witness. He says and he shows, I'm still God. And I'm still alive. And wherever you are, and whatever your condition, he bears witness, both with signs and wonders. Look at number two here. Number two here is the spectacular signs and works of the God of heaven. It tells us in Daniel chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 3. It says in verse 3, now how great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders, his works, his kingdom, it's an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Aren't you glad that God didn't only work in the generation of Abraham? He's still working today. Aren't you glad that God didn't work only in the generation of Moses or Joshua? He's still working today. Aren't you glad that God 
is not limited to the generation of Elijah and Elisha. That even now, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Even now, his dominion is from generation to generation. In this, our generation, in your lifetime, in my lifetime, he will do whatever he has ever done in any other generation. Mighty works, great works, spectacular works, signs and works of the Lord. In Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 37, it tells us in verse 37, and when he was calm, calm, nice, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works, all the mighty works, all the mighty works that they had seen. And the Lord Jesus Christ assured us that those mighty works will not stop after his death, will not stop at his burial, will not stop at his resurrection and advent to heaven, that the mighty works will still continue because it's supposed to be from generation to generation. That's why he said in John Chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. This is the generation of the works of Christ. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my father. And then in verse 13, he tells us, And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the father may be glorified in the son. In verse 14, if ye ask anything in my name, I will do it today. I say today, because a science and his works continue from generation to generation. We're coming to number three here. Number three, the steadfast saints and words of God for all humans. The steadfast saints and words of the God of heaven for all humans. Psalm 33. Reading from verse 9, for he speak and it was done. And it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, I'm God, I change not. He speak and it was done. He speaks now and it is done. He commanded and it stood fast. He commands even now and it stands fast because he, the God of heaven, is everlasting, is eternal. As he was, so he is, and so he will ever be. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. In your life, the counsel of the heathen will come to naught. Will come to zero. I said in your life, in your family, the proposal of God, the promise of God, the plan of God, that God had ordained before you were born, and now you are born again. And the counsel of God, everything he has planned will be fulfilled. God will increase in your life. And Satan and the heathen will decrease, diminish, until they become zero in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. 
the thoughts of his heart to all tell me to all tell me generations generation every generation you know some people say i wish i lived in the time of ezekiel the same thing today i wish i lived in the time of elijah the same thing today i wish i lived in the time when christ was on earth look to all generations whatever happened then good things wonderful things great things miraculous signs and wonders the same will happen today the counsel of the lord standeth forever the thoughts of his heart to all generations i want you to look at matthew chapter 24 verse 35 matthew chapter 24 verse 35 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away you understand until heaven and earth pass away and heaven and earth the sky the galaxies the universe all that has not passed away and as long as they're there and even when they have passed away my words my word of promise my word of power my word of promise and my word of pronouncement my word to be performed shall never pass away today when you look up and you see heaven heaven is still there not passed away and when you see the earth and you're still standing on that solid ground and the earth has not passed away power will not pass away from you the promise of god will not pass away from you his signs and his wonders his sign and his works his sayings and his word will forever be fulfilled in our lives in jesus name we're coming to point number two now point number two the tree that's the man nebuchadnezzar with a peculiar kind of hardness you know when god had been speaking to him first of all he showed him who he is by the life of daniel shadrach meshach and abednego he himself examined them and he himself saw the glory of god the power of god the enablement of god in their lives they were ten times better than all the people and he seemed to appreciate that for a moment his heart remained the same and then in chapter 2 he was so frustrated that he said i'm going to destroy all those magicians daniel everybody included daniel said what's the hurry about uh, come and show you what you are looking for and he went to pray for one night and god revealed to him and he came he said area take, take me there take me to the king i will show him what he has forgotten and daniel came and said even before you slept you are thinking like this and when you slept this was your the, your dream and then he related the dream and showed him the interpretation and he himself the fell down and he said of a truth your god is a god that reveals secret only temporary he was still hardening his heart he now came to chapter three he said any of you that will not bow down worship their idol that i said i'm going to cast him into the very burning furnace and who is that god that will deliver you out of my hand and he said oh king nebuchadnezzar we're not careful do you notice they didn't tell him live forever those who are people they were not psychophants and they were not a people that were licking the boots of everyone they said nebuchadnezzar be it known unto you if you go ahead and do what you want to do there's a god in heaven he will deliver us out of your fairy furnace the man got angry threw them into the fire but the fire could not burn them the fire of the world will not burn you 
The fire of Habalis will not burn you. And the fire of magicians will not burn you. The fire of the powers of darkness will not burn you in your life in Jesus' name. He looked in his said, Did it we throw three men in there? Behold, lo and behold, I see four men, Shedda, Meshach, and Abednego. And the fourth is like the appearance of the Son of God. And then he says, Shedda, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come forth. And he came forth, and he couldn't see any, any trace of the fire on them. And temporarily, temporarily, he bowed, he said, there is a God in heaven. Now we come to chapter 4. The man is still hardened in pride. He has seen what no other king had seen. He was still hardened. He has heard what no other one had heard. He was still hardened. Are you like that? You have attended crusades. You have attended retreats. You have attended conferences, ministers' conference, professional conference, and you have heard it all. You have seen it all. You have seen miracles upon miracles. How is your heart? Are you still like Nebuchadnezzar? What you were, you still are. What you did, you're still doing. And it is your heart is hardened in pride. Be careful. God knows how to humble how to humiliate, how to bring down those hardened people whose hearts are hard. Now we have uh, this man with a peculiar kind of hardness. Look at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the dream of a haughty, hardened man. The dream of a haughty, had the inch man. Number two, the dethronement of a heartless, high minded monarch, a king, the head of an empire, a monarch. Number three, the derangement of a hopeless, petty maniac. The man, the monarch, became a maniac because of the hardness of his heart. Look at number one there. Number one there is the dream of a haughty, hardened man. This man, Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord showed him a dream. This one he didn't forget, but it astonished him. It surprised him. It frightened him. It says in, Dan in Daniel chapter 4 verse 4, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, I saw a dream which made me afraid. No man could make Nebuchadnezzar afraid. If he looked at anyone and their faces or appearances were not inviting, attractive, he said, take that man off, go and kill him. We get rid of him. But this man, that no man could frighten, no woman could frighten, no other king could frighten, no one in his realm, no one at the capital, and no one in the pro provinces could frighten. He had a dream, and God showed him something that made him afraid. If God could make Nebuchadnezzar afraid, the emperor afraid, the heartless, hardened man afraid. God can deal with anyone. That's why before he humbles us, we humble ourselves before him. He said, and the thoughts of my bed, on my, upon my bed, and the visions of my head troubled me. What was the dream? He saw a big tree, great branches that grew from earth to the sky. And then a voice came of the watchmen from heaven, cut it down. 
until seven times, seven seasons, seven years will pass over him. You understand? We have season, dry season, rainy season comes once in a year. Yeah? Then the following year, the season, rainy season, dry season, once in a year. And when it says seven seasons, seven times pass over him, season each year, each year, each year, seven years pass over him. And then he was troubled. What kind of uh, sentence is this? And what kind of statement is this? When he got up, he needed interpretation. And praise the Lord, Daniel was still alive. And have you seen Daniel? The gift of God in Daniel was still very much alive and active. Some people in their spiritual experience, in their ministry, in their gifts, they are up and down. When today they might be up and they can take on any challenge, but you know, tomorrow they're down in the valley and they themselves sing sometimes in the valley, sometimes on the mountain. It's not an easy road. For Daniel, it was different. It was going from strength to strength and from grace to grace. It was shining all the time. Daniel was still around. You're still around. I said you're still around and the grace of God and the gift of God will keep on increasing in your life in Jesus name hardened man hardened haughty man Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 in Proverbs 16 18 pride goes before destruction pride in the heart pride in the attitude pride in the language pride in the action pride in the disposition pride you know the man gets up the woman gets up even the look of the face and the way she looks down at everybody and the way she looks and belittle everybody you can see the person is thinking of himself herself up there and the rest of us down below here pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall look at um, romans chapter 2 we're reading from verse 5 in romans chapter 2 verse 5 it says but after the hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment indignation and the fury of god let's come to number two here number two we're looking at the dethronement of a heartless high-minded monarch this monarch of a king the one that says i am and no one else the one that says nobody can talk to him and nobody could approach him and nobody could advise him he was all in all he was running a one hero one monarch one emperor show in the whole of babylon and now as the prophecy had said that the word will come from heaven from the watchers in heaven cut down the tree eventually he caught daniel and said daniel magicians and astrologers and soothsayers they're not able to interpret this to me can you give me the interpretation of this look at daniel chapter 4 verse 19 in daniel chapter 4 verse 19 we're told about daniel then daniel whose name was belteshazzar we're told he was astonished for one hour and his thoughts troubled him. And the king spake and said, Better Shazza, does Daniel, let not the dreamer or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Better Shazza answered, Daniel answered and said, My lord, 
the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. He now interpreted, he said, Thou king, you are the tree. The watchers from heaven, they're the angels of God in heaven. It's been decided that because of your pride, because of your haughtiness, because of your incorrigibility, you've seen a lot, you've heard a lot, you will not say you're totally ignorant to the existence and the eternality of the God of heaven and yet you remain unchanged you remain untouched you remain untransformed you remain unconverted the time has come that the voice will come from heaven you'll be caught down you'll be driven away from man and from your kingdom you will eat grass like animal what a great man Daniel was. Bold, sympathetic though. Bold, courageous, compassionate though. And yet, he told the truth. He didn't allow the face of the king, the power of the king, and the evil that Nebuchadnezzar could do. He didn't allow that to make him misinterpret the word for Nebuchadnezzar. Are you like that? When you come to the congregation, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Are you able to say that when you see those great personalities there? And when you see all those people that terrify and threaten, are you able to say, all the nations that forget God, he will cast into hell forever and ever. Are you able to say that? Are you able to say that they that walk in pride, they're going to be humiliated and abased? Daniel has given us a good picture of a righteous, faithful, loyal preacher that whoever is there in the congregation, in your congregation or not, you will say the truth. And so he said, thou art the man. And then he said, I counsel you. Look at verse 27 in Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. It says, wherefore king... Let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins. He was saying, You are a sinner, Nebuchadnezzar, and the sins have a kind of steel stuck to you that you are carrying about a load of sin. Break it off. Turn around. Let there be a change and a transformation. Break off thy sins. Can you tell the cash carriers that? Can you tell the powers that be that? Can you tell those notorious popular people that? Can you tell them that the soul that sinneth, it shall die? And there's only one way for you to be free from the judgment that is sure to come. Break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. What was he saying? He said, Nebuchadnezzar, we know you. You are hard. You're harsh, you're cruel, you're wicked. And if you're going to have a change from the proclamation and sentence of heaven, all these iniquities, not regarding anybody as anyone, all that you must repent of. And it says, you will take away your iniquity by showing mercy to the poor. It may be, if it may be, the lengthening, the lengthening of 
thy tranquility, that is of thy peace. If it will be the lengthening of your peace of mind, and peace of heart, and peace in life, and peace in your family, and you're able to follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, what did he do with that counsel? Let's look at number three there. Number three, the dethronement of a hopelessly heady maniac. He became a maniac. Look at Daniel chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 28. It says, all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar all this interpretation came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar all this interpretation and application to his life exposition of the word all this came upon Nebuchadnezzar you know for the first week nothing happened for the first month, nothing happened. Even for the first quarter, three months, nothing happened. I don't know how Nebuchadnezzar was thinking. And maybe Nebuchadnezzar was thinking, I remain who I am, heady, hard-hearted, heartless, hopelessly hard. And yet, I show that God, that I am who I am, and I'm not going to turn. I'm not going to change. He is God in heaven. I am a God over here on earth. When the judgment has not been effected for one week, for one month, for seven months, for ten months, for eleven months, don't think the sinner has escaped. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, in verse 29, it says, at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. In verse 30, it says, the king spake words of pride. The king spake from the haughty heart. The king spake from a forgetful mind, as if he never heard the one is of God. How many times we've come to church, we've attended retreat, we've participated in the crusade, we've heard the word and the pronouncement of the Lord, and we get back home, and the man, the husband, is still who he was. The wife, the woman, is still who she was. The man, the worker, the employer, the employee, the market woman, the market man, the trader, is still who they were. Nothing has changed out of the heart of pride, heart of forgetfulness. They forget it is appointed unto them that judgment will come. And so we're told the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Look at verse 31. When that word came out of him while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee, to thee, and to no other one, to thee, it is spoken, the kingdom is departed 
from thee. You know, Nebuchadnezzar never thought about that. He had the interpretation of the dream in chapter 2. You are the hedge of gold, and then you have the middle Persian, you have the chest of silver, and then you have the grease, the belly of, uh, of, uh, of uh, brass, and then the Roman government, the feet of iron and the toes of iron and clay, and that stone that came will strike that image everything will be shattered and become chaff and the wind will blow it away he was the number one that will come down the head of gold and he never thought about that and now the direct message had come to him Nebuchadnezzar thou art the king you are the one you have grown so high and you have grown so incorrigible and so proud and the voice from heaven is going to come cut it down he never thought about it he thought of eternal eternal security eternal security of my throne eternal security of my power eternal security of my position eternal security of my majesty it doesn't work like that the day will come when God will say no you're not secured in sin you're not secured in pride you're not secure in haughtiness and now it says the word when the word was in the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven saying O king Nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken and it says the kingdom is departed from thee look at verse 32 in verse 32 it says and they shall drive thee from men and my and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make thee to eat grass as an oxen he became deranged he became mental he became a maniac it says until thou until thou know that the most high rulers in the kingdom of men and giveth he to whomsoever he will verse 33 in verse 33 and the same hour the same hour was the sin fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and he did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until his ears were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws what the Lord had said appeared impossible how can that be a king he had you know Babylon at that time they were number one in the forefront of science in the forefront of medicine in the forefront of archaeology in the forefront of engineering and the man would have been thinking the way we were in this kingdom our advancement in knowledge knowledge in human care he said how could that happen he had the best of science services of the best of professionals and yet it came to pass whatever God has said in judgment whatever God has said in pronouncement whatever God has said in promise everything God has said on this side on that side everything will be fulfilled the only thing we can do so that we escape the judgment of God however incredible impossible it may seem is to turn and break off our sin and break off our iniquity and come to the Lord with a humble soft tender prayerful submissive heart unto the Lord the derangement of a hopelessly heady maniac we're coming now to point number three point number three the triumph of the powerful king of 
heaven. We're coming to this under three perspectives. Number one, the everlasting dominion of the God who is able. Number two, the enduring deliverance by the God who is able. Number three is the eternal description of the God who is able. Look at number one here. Number one here, we're looking at the everlasting dominion of the God who is able. Our God is able. Somebody there said our God is able. And he has everlasting dominion. Look at Psalm 145. And I'm looking at verse 13. Psalm 145, verse 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Look at verse 17 there. In verse 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Daniel chapter 7, reading from verse 14. Daniel chapter 7, verse 14. It tells us there and there was given unto him was given him dominion and glory and kingdom that all people nations languages shall serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away the dominion of christ the power of Christ, the authority of Christ, the possibilities in Christ forever and ever that shall not pass away and his kingdom which shall not be destroyed. I pray you'll be a part of that kingdom. I'm a part of that kingdom. I'm a part of that kingdom. Goodness will never pass away in your life. Joy will never pass away in your life. Authority and power and dominion will never pass away in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, it says, And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the Most High. We are the people whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Let's look at number two there. Number two there, we're looking at the enduring deliverance by the God who is able. Enduring lasting, durable, deliverance, continual, continuous, impossible to terminate, dominion, deliverance by the God who is able. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4 verse 36. In Daniel chapter 4 verse 36, the same time my reason returned unto me. There's something about repentance that attracts the favor and the mercy and the compassion of God. There's something about returning from the jungle of pride and coming to the platform of humility that attracts the favor of God and the forgiveness of God and the goodness of God in our lives. It says, as he turned, as he realized, and it says, I I now celebrate the God of heaven. He said, at that same time, my reason returned unto me and from the good for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me. My counselors also and my Lord sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and excellent majesty was added unto me. He became better than he was before he became a maniac. He became higher and he became more favored than he was before he became a maniac and i pray from today good things 
better things, greater things, higher things will be taking place in your life in Jesus' name. He will lift you up. He will lift me up. He, the God of heaven, will lift who? He lift you up in Jesus' name. You know, if we walk in pride and you say, I can exalt myself, I can lift up myself, I can promote myself by my bragging, by my boasting, by my utterances. Everybody will be afraid of me. God will bring such a person down. But if you come down, if you say, Lord, who am I? I'm just a creature. Who am I? I'm a person that was saved by your grace. Who am I? What did I have when I came into the kingdom and now I'm in the kingdom and you have done all this for me? I bend the knee before you. I bow my, my backbone that have been erect and stiff, I bend all that and I bow before you. I honor you. I hallow you. As you humble yourself before the Lord, the Lord will lift you up. He will do wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here, we're looking at the eternal description of the God who is able. The God who is able. The God who is able. Look at Daniel chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 17. Daniel chapter 3, we're looking at verse 17. It says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able. Our God whom we serve is able. Yes, he's able, always able. But don't forget that part, whom we serve. We serve him in the day, at night, everywhere. Whom we serve, we serve him with our heart, with our soul, with our mind. Whom we serve, we serve him with our hands. And we serve him in duty. Whom we serve, we serve him with our consecration. We serve him with everything we've got. Our God, whom we serve, is able, able to deliver us from thy bony in furry furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. The Lord will deliver you, because our God is able. Is your God able? I said, is your God able? Able to do what? Hebrews chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, reading from verse 25, it tells us, it says, Wherefore he is able also to save to the uttermost, able to save to the uttermost part of the earth, able to save to the uttermost condition on earth, able to save at the extreme circumstances in life. He is able, able to save to the uttermost that come unto God by him seen. He ever live to make intercession for them. Able. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 12. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse in the middle here, in the middle, therefore I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Beyond any shadow of doubt, I am persuaded. It says that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 18. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor to support, to sustain them that are tempted. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 8, it tells us, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having 
all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. We serve a God who is able. Look at Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 4, when you came at verse 20, is still telling us about God who is able and the attitude of Abraham and the disposition of Abraham and the faith of Abraham and the loyalty of Abraham and the faithfulness of Abraham because he knew the kind of God he was serving and he says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to God and then in verse 21 in verse 21 he says I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform as he promised a child for the barren is able also to perform as he promised that he will revitalize the, the body of a hundred year old man a ninety year old woman and they will still have a bundle of laughter called Isaac able, able to perform what he had promised. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 20. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 it says now unto him that is able, 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 able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And then in verse 21, it says unto him, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And everybody said, Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. Because we have a God who is able, we serve a God who is able, we trust in the God who is able with you. We can put on the whole armor of God and we're able to stand against the was of the devil. Then in verse 13, in verse 13, he assures us, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand. Able to withstand. Able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Look at verse 16 there. In verse 16, it says, Above all, beyond all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able. The shield of faith, a man of faith, a woman of faith, a person of faith, a believer that believes the promises of God all the time. And everywhere he goes, sickness is coming, he has the shield of faith. Attack is coming, he has the uh, shield of faith. And the utterances of the paths of darkness, they're coming, he has the shield of faith. He has a dream that is destabilizing. He has the shield of faith. And he says, above all, all taking the shield of it wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It will be fulfilled in your life. Fulfilled in your life. Look at Jude chapter 1. Only one chapter in Jude and verse 24. Jude chapter 1. We're looking at verse 24 now. Unto him that is able my heart unto him, my life unto him, my consecration unto him, my progress unto him, my future in his hand, my past in his hand, and my present in his hand, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. He'll keep you from falling. And then he says, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verse 25, in verse 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Heaven says amen to your life. Yeah. And every impossibility will become possible in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Able, able, God is 
Abel. Rise up and affirm that in your life. Abel, Abel, God is able in your life. Abel, Abel, God is able. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. That God, in his great ability, in his divine power, that he'll make all good things possible in your life. When he threatens with judgment, he's able to fulfill that. When he encourages with promises, he's able to fulfill that. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.